Hello, today we're going to look at running Python coroutines asynchronously and also handle errors gracefully uh, in case there's an exception in any of those coroutines as they're running. So on the screen here, I have a very simple coroutine. We have a uh, coroutine that takes in a number and then it prints it to tell you what it's running with and it waits for one second asynchronously and then it returns the square of that number. We can, a realistic example, this could be an HTTP request or a subprocess or something you're waiting on that isn't CPU bound, which allows you to leverage asynchronous programming to run these coroutines at the same time and not have them block each other. Uh, if we wanna run two coroutines uh, asynchronously, there are a couple ways to do it. Um, First, I'm gonna show the way in serial just to show the contrast. So if we run a coroutine, we need to await it in order to get the result from it. Uh, but if we do it this way, uh, this is going to block before we get to result two. So this will wait one second, return the result, and then this will start coroutine two, wait one second and return the result. Let's just uh, see that. So we start one, finish one, start two, finish two, and then we printed both results. If we want them to actually run at the same time, there are a couple ways to do that. Uh, the, one of the simplest ways is to use the gather method. Uh, so a synchronous gather allows you to feed your coroutines into it, and it'll run them both at the same time asynchronously, and it will give you all the results in a list. You can unpack those and show it to the screen. So if we, if we run this, this should go much faster. So both of them started at the same time and then one second went by, they both waited for that one second at the same time and then we printed the results to the screen. A more flexible way to do it is to create tasks. Here we have a task for running foo with one and once you create the task, it starts running. Uh, so this will not block while we move on to this uh, next line. Um, so once we hit an await in here, it will allow us to move on to execution of other lines of code. And so then we can create uh, the second coroutine, uh, but we still need to await these tasks in order for, for them to finish. And then we can call dot result on the task in order to get what the what the coroutine actually returns. And then we print them to the screen. So if we run this, create uh, create task, they both started at the same time, almost the same time, and they finished at almost the same time. So this also got us the asynchronous behavior that we want. And the last way I'm going to show you is with a is using a task group, which it was introduced in Python 3.11, I think. And here, the task group uh, uses a context manager, and when exiting that context, it will wait. It will await all of the tasks that have been added to the task group. So you don't need to actually call await on it. Uh, once you exit this context, you know that every all of the tasks are done. So we can safely call dot result on everything. And just to prove it to you, uh, let's run this very quickly. Task group, you know, we, we start task one, start task two, and then once we exit the context, everything finishes, and then we print the results. So this is all great if there are no exceptions. If you have exceptions in any of these instances, then you have to deal with all of the traceback and it gets a little messy. So in order to show how to handle that gracefully, let's uh, introduce some exceptions and exception handling. I've modified our foo. Um, I've added a custom error class so we can get that exception type in our try accept block. And I'm gonna make this uh, coroutine throw an exception if one is fed to it. So this will never complete with one. It'll say task, task one failed. Task two will complete with no issue. And I've also wrapped all of this with a try accept block so we can see 
if any of our tasks are canceled um, because some of the methods that I've shown uh, gather and task group if one of the coroutines failed then it will throw uh, it will raise an asyncio canceled error in all of the other tasks in the task group and we'll be able to see that here uh, so let's look at gather first because that's the simplest and let me eliminate this for now if we run just gather the way we did before and one of the tasks gets an exception, then what happens is that you get all of this ugly trace back. And we can see that we have this exception, task one failed, there's all of this trace back, and we can also see that task two was canceled. So in the gather, it was running task one and two, task one had an exception, and so the gather decided to raise a canceled error in exception two. And then we get all of this other trace back. If um, that may be the right thing to do to cancel everything if there's an issue in any of your coroutines, but if you want anything that can finish to finish, then you can add return exceptions equals true to your gather invocation. And then instead of raising a canceled error in every other coroutine, it will let those finished. And for the coroutines that encountered exceptions, it will return the exception instead of the return result. So if we rerun gather, then we start running one and two, and the result we get for task one, instead of being one, it's task one failed. And for two, we get the successful result of four. Uh, let's look at our two other methods, create task and task group. For create create task, and this also applies if you're running serial uh, with, without tasks, but we create the tasks as usual and they start running. Uh, but the exception is only raised when we call await on the task. So here is where we need to wrap with our try accept blocks. And we'll see that if we run this, then for task one, we get an exception. So it doesn't actually give it, print out the result. Uh, for task two, uh, we can run this and it will still be successful and, and print out the result. So let's see that in action. Create task, running one and two, and then two completes, one doesn't complete. And in your try except you can decide what to do with that failed result. The last one, and the one that's a little bit tricky, is task group. So with task group, if it encounters an exception in any of the tasks, then it will raise a canceled error in every other task, kind of like with gather. But um, you'll also, if you don't have this try accept the block, um, you'll get like a lot of ugly trace back with uh, exception groups. So we need to wrap the entire asynchronous context with a try accept uh, block, but we're not doing try accept as normal. We're doing accept star, which will allow us to handle the exception groups. So the exception groups will have all of the exceptions that were thrown of type foo error. And we can get the exception group and loop through all of the exceptions in the exception group and print them to the screen to see what happened. Um, so if we run that, then we get um, both of them started running and task one failed and task two was canceled. Um, so hopefully uh, one of these methods for running uh, Python code asynchronously works for you and you can gracefully handle uh, the inevitable errors that you will get at some point.